Hi, in this video I want to show you what I've been working on for the last three months. So this is a program for algorithmic composition. What it does is it reads in lines from a txt file and then generates a piece. Uh, it can generate as long a piece as you have memory. It just takes longer. This one has 4000 uh, 4, individual beats. Yeah, I will show you the graphical user interface. Um, as you can see here, we currently have set the instrument to harp and every beat takes 99 milliseconds. So if I press space, then it will start. <laughs> And we also have a lot of buttons here. Those are just a few things that this user interface currently can do. Um, this button toggles the direction the piece is played. So I can go forward and backward. If I go to the start and then backward and looping is active, then I will go to the end of the piece. And you can also have fun with a random instrument. And a random delay. So now it's, it's much slower. Okay, that's the user interface. Now I'm going to show you what the recipe for this looks like. So here we have the recipe file. The first line is the title, then we have eight tone. That means there is four steps for per semitone. And a lot of other instructions that I will explain later. I will start with a simpler example. So here we go. This is a recipe file for a very si simple six tone scale. Uh, six tone means there are 36 steps per octave, so three times as many as on a piano. Every recipe file has at least one selector line and one instruction line. Actually, it can have zero instruction lines, but that doesn't make much sense. During creation of the piece, the program decides which pitches will be played at one particular time. To do that, Every single pitch gets an evaluation, which is an integer. And the program tries to pick the pitches that have the highest evaluation. If there are several with the same highest evaluation, this selector line tells it to select just one of the lowest. Then here we have an instruction line that says avoid one same pitches. So avoid that the same pitches are played again. So every time a pitch is added to the piece, the evaluation for this pitch gets down by one because it says avoid one. And then here we have a dimension line that tells us that there are 60 pitches in total. And the lowest of these pitches is given here, 53. That's the MIDI note number 53. That's somewhere in the middle of the register you will hear. So what this does in total is it just generates a scale that goes from the lowest pitch upward. Since in the beginning it selects the lowest pitch. And then when this pitch has been selected once, this line, avoid the same pitches, tells it, no, don't pick the same pitch again. So it picks the next lowest pitch and so on. So this is just an example to show you a six stone scale. This is what it looks like in the program. I am going to start it so that you can hear the six stone steps.
can see in the bottom of the program there is a line with letters. I've chosen a rather strange lettering system. I've gotten used to it. So C, D, E, F, G are the notes as you know them, probably. And the notes in between, I just chose a letter that I thought fits to the note. I have strange associations. And you can see that there are three pitches for each of the letters. For this next example, I have added one line. Prefer 20 set modus 4. So what this does is it tells the program to increase the evaluation by 20 if the pitch belongs to the set of pitches that is described by modus 4. Modus 4 means every fourth note is selected. Let's see what that looks like. We get this nice scale. It sounds rather strange to European ears if you're not used to it, because we would expect every third note chosen, then we would get just what you have on the piano. But instead I chose every fourth note. So the lowest note is exactly an E flat, but the next note is one third higher than a regular E. And it takes two more steps until we get to a G, and that is a normal G. Every three steps we get to a note that we actually have on the piano. Like here's another E flat, which I call Z. Here again we have the example that I used in the beginning. It's a rather complicated recipe and I probably won't explain every single detail here. Just look here, the last three lines are my selectors. Remember that the program tries to always select the pitches that have the highest evaluation. And all these lines just select pitches from the highest evaluation. Just if there are several different pitches that all have the same evaluation value, that is the best evaluation, um, it chooses the lowest one, the highest one, and two in the middle. Then here on the top you see that this, this piece is an eighth tone. That means there are four steps per semitone and 48 steps per octave. Here we see there are 260 pitches in total and the lowest pitch is 33 in MIDI note numbers. We have three prefer instructions and two avoid instructions with different values. I tweaked around the parameters until I found something that I like. You see here that there are start parameters and end parameters. So I can now also tell the program this instruction only applies after note 5 and this instruction only applies for the first five notes or six notes because starting with zero. This one here is a deterministic random instruction which I use in this piece to just generate the first five or six beats. And everything else is generated by following the rules that are given in the other instructions. And all those rules depend on what already happened before. So the first five or six beats are actually really important in creating the piece. That's why I use one random function here. It's a deterministic random function. It always generates the same pitches. But it is random, I don't really have much control over it. There are three parameters here that tell it what exactly will be the outcome. And the other instructions are to prefer the same pitches that already happened, to prefer the same intervals between pitches that already happened, and so it doesn't get stuck and just play the same pitches over and over again. There's also avoid same pitches as in minus 14 to minus 2800. That means avoid the same pitches that happened from 14 beats back to 2800 beats back. 
and as I said, I won't explain it in total, but that just means, okay, avoid the pitches that happened in the last 2800 beats. But if it's farther in the past, it doesn't matter. So let's listen to this again. Can play around with the instrument a bit. Let's see what happens. Oops, some instruments are weird and you can't hear them. So yeah. But now, what happens if we just change the deterministic random function? It will generate a different piece, but it still follows basically the same rules, so it should sound very similar. So I'm going back to the recipe file and just change those numbers to something else. Bloop, 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 bloop. And let's see what happens. As you can see, or rather here, the pattern is very similar to what we had before, but the pitches are different, the harmonies are different. Yeah, and we can listen to the whole 4000 beats generated, in theory. <laughs> or we can create 40,000 beats, or even a million beats. I've done that in the past, but it usually... My poor laptop doesn't like it, let's say it like that. Thanks for watching. And... I'm probably going to do another one in some time, but I don't know. I don't know when I will get to it. Everything you see here is work in progress and everything will probably change. So, bye.